in early signs of what seems like an alarming situation, India's R value for COVID has again risen above one. Now, the R value, of course, tells you how fast the infection is spreading, the rate of spread of the infection. Uh, and notably, this value had gone down to 0.83 and again has gone up beyond one. So why has this happened and what does this imply? That's what we're going to try and find out in this episode of Government Matters. And I have with me Mohana Basu, who tracks COVID for the print and who particularly tracks a lot of data related to the print as well as the R value. So Mohana, uh, hi, thank you for joining us in Government Matters today. Hi, Ruhi. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about the R value this week because you've done a story today uh, and it, it doesn't sound very good, does it? Right. Uh, so, you know, like till last week, like you mentioned, we did see that the values were going down. And, uh, you know, obviously that that did uh, have make us think that perhaps we were not yet approaching the third wave. But uh, alarmingly, just in fact, the day after we had reported uh, last week's R, the numbers did start to rise. And now we see that uh, the number that we are at today, 1.17, that's very close to what was what had happened just before uh, the third, the second wave had hit India last time. So at that time, um, around you know, the second week of March, we were at 1.19. And uh, that is where we are again today. So definitely, it is a very alarming situation. Because um, as you know, that we know what what is coming up is ideally the festive season for India. And uh, we do need to make sure that the numbers do not rise further. Okay, so Mona, what is leading this rise? Because we know different states have a different situation as far as COVID is concerned. There are some states where cases continue to surge, while in the other states, it seems a little more in control. Right, so uh, of course, I mean, uh, uh, this I have also reported in the past that Maharashtra and Kerala being the uh, states that have so, uh, you know, have the highest number of active cases, they are basically the ones that lead to this spike. Uh, Throughout the beginning, like the first one year of the pandemic, it was mostly Maharashtra that used to drive up or drive down the R value. So whatever would happen in Maharashtra would be mirrored in our, uh, in India's overall R value as well. But now that trend is mostly led by Kerala, where the, num- the active cases are the highest. And uh, so this week, what we see is that both Kerala and Maharashtra have seen a rise in R. Uh, last week, both of them them were at one zero point eight seven, right? Mm. Uh, both the states, and now both of them have seen a sudden increase to over one. So, right. uh, as you know, like uh, Kerala just celebrated. I mean, there was there was onam festivities there, and that did lead to a rise over there. And as for Maharashtra, we have uh, you know Janmashtami. We have uh, the preparations for the upcoming Ganpati festival. Ganpati. Yeah, mm-hmm. so these these are some of the things apart from the fact that Maharashtra is and Kerala both have uh, been, you know, Kerala in fact was the place where the first uh, cases arrived, right. right? So these are these are both the states are the kind that have a lot of influx from, um, you know, foreign countries as well from other states. There's a lot of interstate and intercountry. Uh, you know, uh, tra- trade happening, travel happening. So that is probably one of the reasons. And apart from this, uh, one surprise uh, that I would say came up this time was that even, uh, you know, Jammu Kashmir is another state which has high R. It has 1.25 right now, which uh, is, you know, like... The thing is that all these states, all the states that got left out in the first wave of the pandemic and the second wave of the pandemic uh, are the ones that are also seeing a rise in numbers. So including the Northeast. Yes. So Mizoram, again, for example, has the highest R among all the states which have the highest active cases. So Mizoram's R right now is 1.36, which is basically the highest. Right. So So, so sorry. No, no, sorry. Carry on. Yeah, so together with the fact that Maharashtra and Kerala's uh, cases have not died down and the fact that pockets of the country which were not affected earlier are now getting affected. So these are the two things that seem to be driving the cases up. 
right so mona you know you've spoken to some experts are they alarmed are they saying or uh, you know that this could potentially or uh, get worse so yes uh, definitely uh, you know sitabra sena who uh, from institute of uh, mathematical sciences in chennai he's the one who basically tracks these numbers uh, he's been doing that since the beginning of the pandemic and uh, what he pointed out was you know like two weeks back we did have uh, one week where r went up to 1.03 so even then it was just a rise of a few days it did not lead to a uh overall rise in numbers over the next one week and then we saw r come down again but this time what we are seeing is is resembling what happened before the second wave as i mentioned before so that is why uh you know it, it's a more alarming situation and it's it does not look like like this trend this r value is not a calculation that has been done over the last two or three days it's not an increase of a few days it's a sustained trend over a week so that is why we definitely need to be alarmed and as such also our active cases are not that low i think you are uh, i'm sorry yes. <laughs> that's 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 the peril of working from home always i right, i think that's on. a sweet that's a sweet uh, side effect of working from home anyway so uh, coming back to this so the active numbers anyway are not very low uh, you know our base active numbers are at 3 over 3 lakh right now so that means that you know even if it were just above 1 we would still have reason to worry but right now it's almost 1.2 which means right. it's it's a lot higher than what you know we are prepared for like we we do not want this to um, continue remain yeah yeah to remain a sustained trend yeah right okay so let's begin with this question from anmol can the r number define if there will be the third wave a mona also very quickly just to tell our viewers r number basically in fact uh, uh, is the reproduction rate of covid right it tells you whether you know if i'm infected how many more people can i infect it's called the re- uh, effective reproduction number so based on how infectious a disease is and how many people uh, are vulnerable to the disease and how long a person remains infectious so these are some of the factors that uh, sort of uh, uh, dictate say if i am ill with covid how many people can i potentially infect during the time right. that i remain infectious so when an r, when r is 1 we would say that uh, one person i am probably giving the infection to one person that person is you know uh, giving it to another person so this tra- this continues so if if r is below 1 that means that the number of active cases will start declining and that is what we want to maintain for a very long time sorry the part of the question and mole uh, can our number define if there will be the third wave so yes um we again this is a, a number that we will need to watch for over a period of time and uh, if if r is 1.17 right now that means over the coming week we will see cases continue to increase it's kind of a predictor of which way the active case numbers will the go curve will go right so it's uh, so the higher this number is the more quickly the uh, numbers will multiply so definitely this is something to be alarmed about and and i say this not because just based on that one number but the fact that uh, you know uh, different states are showing the same trend of an increasing r so it's not just right. about whether the average number is showing you know above one it's the fact that the the epidemic is is differently playing out in different states and all of them are showing an increasing trend all right okay uh, saksham what was the change in r number between the two variants so do the variants of covid impact the r number oh uh, so you know like uh, like i said the the r value is sort of dependent on how infectious the disease is and the variant uh, will increase like for example with delta and with alpha we did see some uh, studies showing that they were more infectious but uh, right now with the knowledge we have we do not know for sure exactly how much uh, of of this uh, you know change in r is pe- based on uh, the variant itself because uh, what we are looking at is the is the number in its totality we are not looking at it uh, looking at it 
uh, as you know what happens when this variant is in the population because it's difficult to study it like that in in the sense that since we have so many different uh, variants already in the population so it's difficult to isolate which variant at this point is uh, giving rise to this number but uh, what we do know is that you know uh, 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 a combination of all the factors, the preventive measures that are being taken and uh, the number of people who are vaccinated or not vaccinated, all of these together is what is uh, driving our up. All right. Okay. This question is from uh, Naman. Does herd immunity affect the R value? Uh, yes, it does. So uh, now the thing is, this again has been, it's, it's still a, a, a topic of, you know, more research and debate, but, you know, in any, any infectious disease, we would expect that after a particular set of people have been uh, infected once, uh, you know, the R value will go down because those people are no longer susceptible. But the thing is that we are not seeing that in case of COVID. We are seeing reinfections. And uh, the, the way that, you know, like even among the vaccinated population, we know that the vaccines that we have right now are not protective against infection. They are protective right. against the disease. So that, right. Yes. So, so that means that you can still get the infection even if you are uh, vaccinated. So, so in this disease, in, this, in the case of COVID, it does not seem that, you know, like what, what we have defined herd immunity as is really in, you know, affecting the R value. But again, this is something that is a developing area of study because what we interpret as herd immunity, the way we measure herd immunity is also not perfect. So, you know, uh, when we talk about seroprevalence studies, for example, they right. tend to sort of... Uh, take samples from a very small population or from a, even if it's not small, like a population that is not representative of the rest of the state. So if, if there is, you know, a lot of samples taken from one district of Pune and it shows that there is 70% uh, of those people had uh, antibodies, that may not mean that the entire, of, you know, the entire city of Pune has 70% seroprevalence. So these are things that Theoretically, yes, herd immunity should be reducing our value, but uh, in the real life, in the real world, it does not really play out as we would want it to. All right. Okay, this question is from Aru Basu, who is a member of the print YouTube community. Is in R more than three or four in some states? Are you taking the average for India? Uh, so yes, we are taking the average for India, and uh, I would I would want to point out here that there are different scientists who are calculating R uh, throughout the world, throughout India. There are different groups, uh, and depending on their models, we might get different values. Like the base, uh, the the base value might be different. So what may show up as three in some models may actually be like you know one point three six in 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 the model that we are using. So the absolute values may differ across models, but what you will see if you compare the numbers that we get from these models is that the trend is same. So since we have been following the model that um, Sitabra Sina has been giving us, uh, the, the numbers that follow that, so according to that, the, uh, the ones that have the highest uh, you know, active cases over there, the highest right now is Mizoram, which is 1.36. So depending okay. on model, you might see different numbers. Right. Okay. This question is uh, again from Aru Basu. One more question. What about breakout infections? Uh, we are alive, but lives are getting destroyed every moment. Someone is getting affected. Effectively, nothing has stopped. So, you know, I mean, things are better, but there are still breakout infections happening. So uh, that's what I said. Like uh, this, this, this vaccine that we have right now is not a protection against the infection itself. It's a protection against, uh, you know, severe disease and death. So uh, if we have to continue to follow the same protocols, the same prevent prevention measures that we were following even before getting the vaccine, it's just that, yes, once it, if you get the vaccine and then get infected, you will uh, have a lower risk of death. So that is, that is basically what we are looking at. So and even in the case of, uh, you know, breakthrough infections, most of the studies have showed that even when you get breakthrough infections from, uh, you know, more, more deadly, so-called deadly variants, 
you do you are more protected from death or disease uh, from severe disease so that is that is what has changed if you look at the numbers of uh, you know the 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 mortality rate that we were seeing in the early months of the pandemic to what we are seeing now there is a di- huge difference that is why a lot of us are able to go about doing you know go go about doing things that we were doing before the pandemic so that is what has changed and the fact that we are learning to live with the pandemic and we do have slightly better understanding of the disease and how to treat it so you right. know these are these are the changes that we have seen over the two years okay i'll take one last question this is from vipul banwal who says how do you reach the conclusion that ganesh festival preparations and janmashtami are the reason behind maharashtra increasing or the r value increasing in maharashtra and not the opening up of normal human activity well mona we do know that uh, you know the virus loves crowds right and religion uh is always associated with congregations and crowds whether it was bakri eid in kerala or now onam celebrations in kerala both led to an increase in uh cases yeah so what i i want to like specifically point out over here is that um uh you know our uh, like the the hindu religion or uh um, even even christianity for that Any matter, religion. we have yeah we have uh, you know chants we have uh groups singing bhajans together or we have choirs so this activity the singing is um, it's 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 one of those activities that causes aerosols to uh, be emitted out of our mouths more than breathing so that the, there have been specific studies that show that these singing activities uh, you know in a closed space increases the risk of transmission so which is why uh, you know temples and religious activities sort of tend to uh, in it's 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 a higher risk factor than our regular activities if you if you talk about a market you do not sit together in a group or uh, you know any way in it during a festival there's a lot of emotions there's hugging there's you know chanting and uh, being in one space for a long time so that is why you know these if activities are thought to be riskier than um, you know regular going to the market or uh, or other activities that we're talking about right you know as i said uh, uh, religion loves crowds and the virus loves crowds too so uh, really one has to be extremely careful about celebrating any festival till uh, the pandemic still looms large the threat of the pandemic still looms large thank you mona for talking to us and for explaining what the spike in r value means uh, as we keep telling our viewers um, and let's reaffirm this now that the r value has shot up above one again stay masked please get yourself vaccinated if you haven't already uh, maintain physical distance and always practice hand hygiene just some very basic things which can help us 